Hello everyone! Welcome back to those of you who've stuck by me for my first two videos and welcome to anyone who's new. If you're a plant lover, plant killer or plant admirer then make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Really, really quickly, I know it's not Christmas yet, but I just wanted to tell you that the Jungle Haven's Christmas stock has now dropped on our website. We've got lots of gorgeous gift sets, as well as new plants, pots, home accessories, and much, 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 much more. We've also introduced gift cards, which are perfect if you want to let your friend or loved one choose their own gifts. This week's video is all about Calathea care. Calatheas are beautiful, beautiful tropical plants that are also non-toxic, so perfect if you've got pets or small children, obviously, that are prone to nibbling things. That being said, I would always recommend keeping your plants out of reach of small children and four-legged children. Once you get the hang of what Calatheas do like and don't like, they're actually pretty easy, low-maintenance plants, but I know finding that balance at first can be quite tricky if you've never had them before, so I'm really hoping that this helps. For this video, I'm going to take you through into the plant room. We are now in the plant room. The Calatheas I've got here, Calathea Rufi Barba, Rufi Barba, Rufi Barba, which is commonly known as the furry feather Calathea. It does have really, really soft furry leaves. This one is Calathea lancifolia. Lancifolia? Please don't judge me on my pronunciations of the plant names. Good on you if you can do all the Latin names. I struggle. But this one is commonly known as the rattlesnake plant. Calathea majestica. This one is so, so, so pretty commonly known as the White Star. This one is <laughs> Calathea roseopicta. Roseopicta. I don't know, I'm never going to get that one, so someone let me know how you say that. It's commonly known as the Medallion Calathea. And finally, Calathea ornata. That one's easier. Also known as the Pinstripe Calathea. Calatheas are most commonly known as prayer plants because they essentially turn themselves towards the light. Their leaves will follow the light and then fold back up at night. So almost like they're bowing, praying. You can see this one here hasn't been turned for probably four days and its leaves have all just completely gone towards the light. In my last video, I was talking about turning plants that grow towards the light quickly. Calatheas really, really do that very, very fast. So I would advise turning them once a week if you can. If you've got a lot of Calatheas grouped together, then chances are you'll probably actually be able to hear them moving. When we first moved house, I had about four Calatheas together in the hallway for a while. And every time I was working, I kept hearing k -k -k. And I swear to God, I thought the house was haunted because their leaves were just moving all the time following the light. Calatheas do best in bright, indirect sunlight. I know it could be a bit confusing when people say that because it, it could be hard to tell what's bright and what's not. I would recommend if you're going to put it somewhere that receives a lot of sun, make sure that you've got a filter of some sort. So either it's shaded by lots of other plants, but it still receives light in that area, or you've got a sheer curtain or something like that so that it doesn't actually have direct sun hitting it all day because its leaves will burn over time. In their natural habitats, they tend to grow beneath kind of a lot of thick vegetation. So this essentially filters any direct sunlight that they receive. That being said, they can absolutely cope in lower light conditions as well. They're fairly adaptable plants. I mean, for example, I've got mine down here on a shelf that does get some light from north, south, east, west, from the west, <laughs> west facing window, which obviously isn't ideal. I have got grow lights in here as well, as you can probably see. I'll talk about that in a minute. But yeah, I mean, they've coped really, really well here. I would say that this is kind of medium to low light conditions that I've got them in here. As I say, I do use grow lights in here at this time of year, just because the light in this room is not great. But what I tend to do is I tend to put higher light plants above them, so they have the direct hit of the grow light and kind of mimicking a Calathea's natural habitat, I let the light just filter down through and they will receive that along with some natural light from the west facing window. 
I mentioned about turning your calatheas regularly. Another thing you should be doing is dusting their leaves regularly, allowing them to soak up as much light as possible in order to photosynthesize. And also this is such a good opportunity to check for pests as well. Calatheas unfortunately are so susceptible to pests. Spider mites and thrips, I would say, are probably the worst. The best way to check is to just bring your plant under a really, really, really bright light and just check both sides of the leaves. Checking under the leaves is so important because that's where you usually notice it first. Don't just look for pests themselves, but look for uh, spider, like little spider's webs, um, sandy residue on the leaves, discoloration, anything that just doesn't look quite right. Chances are, if it doesn't look quite right, it's not quite right. <laughs> Even if everything looks absolutely fine, I would still advise wiping both sides of the leaves on a regular basis. I personally try and do it at least once a week. I will be making a video specifically about treating pests on your plants at some point. If this is something you'd like to see, then let me know in the comments below. Calatheas like their soil to be kept moist. I think this is probably the area where most people, a lot of people go wrong because they hear that and they think, oh, we need to water them all the time, which is so not the case. And that leads to so many issues like root rot and stuff like that where they're sitting in water and they essentially drown. I would say on average water them about once a week but make sure you just monitor the soil. I know some plants love their soil to completely dry out before you rewater them. Calatheas are not like that. If that happens their leaves will start curling and they won't be very happy at all. I'm taking a two minute break from Calatheas because something very exciting has just arrived in the post. So this is going to be, if it is what I think it is, a bit of a unboxing break. It is what I think it is. It is a beautiful variegated monstera cutting that I won on a bid in eBay and I'm going to propagate and hopefully it will be coming to the shop soon. I always try to use either rainwater or filtered water to water my calatheas just because the chemicals, the minerals in tap water can be really harsh on them and cause lots of issues long term. I've said this before as well, but if you have a water softener, then don't use this water to water your plants. The chemicals in water softener are really high in sodium and over a long period of time, it can actually kill your plants. So I really wouldn't recommend doing this. This is something that I would say is a general rule for all plants that I always say underwatering is always better than overwatering. Underwatering, the worst that's going to happen is your plant's going to be looking a bit wilted and telling you when it needs a drink. Whereas if you overwater and your plant gets something like root rot, this can be a real, real pain to fix. And sometimes it's not fixable and your plant dies. So I would say if you're not sure about watering, underwater as opposed to overwater. Some people use a moisture meter to check their soil. It basically tells you whether the soil's dry, moist or wet, if you're not quite sure about watering. I personally don't really use this, but I know if you're just getting to know a plant and you haven't kind of found that right balance yet and you're not quite sure, then this is probably a really good shout because it will save you having to go through the under overwater thing. If the leaves of your calathea are yellowing and around kind of the base of the stem, it's kind of very dark, almost black, then chances are you have overwatered. If this is the case, I would say take it out of its nursery pot straight away and just really, really carefully check the roots. I did put a description in my first video in the box at the bottom, description box, about how you can try and fix root rot. It can be doable, I've done it before, but it's a bit of a pain, so you want to avoid it if you can. One of the main, main, main things that Calatheas need to stay happy and healthy is high humidity levels. I have my humidifier set to about 65%, but if I've got the radiators on it, then I'll whack it up to about 70. This is just because the radiators cause the air in your house to dry out quicker than it normally would. If you found the right balance with your watering, but your plant is still getting kind of brown spots, brown edges, particularly on the leaves, then chances are it is craving extra humidity. My advice would be, <laughs> invest in a decent humidifier. I do have a couple of cheaper alternatives that I talked about in my last video that I will put up there, up there, one of the two. But yeah, a decent humidifier is the best way forward. Also, the soil mix that I tend to use for calatheas is included in that video. I also sell a nutrient boost... 
nutrient boosting plant mister oh my god that's a tongue twister which is great at temporarily raising the humidity levels and also helping to prevent pests the one type of calathea i would say not to mist i mean this is just in general actually for furry plants um but would be the furry feather just because their fuzz essentially holds the water and it can actually lead to fungal diseases and rotting in terms of fertilizing calatheas I tend to do it about two to four times a week during growing season, which is the spring and summer months. During the winter, I just let them be. I don't give them any fertilizer. They're not popping out new growth, so it's pointless. It won't do them any good. I've said in my previous video, again, about things you can be doing during the winter months if you want to give your plants a little boost, and that includes calatheas, but on the whole, I just stick to normal watering during the winter. Temperature wise, I mean, not many plants like big fluctuations in temperatures, but calatheas are really, really sensitive to this. I would say avoid keeping it in a place that's particularly drafty, so away from doors, windows, and I would try try and maintain a steady temperature of about 18 to 20 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit. If it drops slightly lower, then it's not the end of the world, but I would say don't let it drop below about 15 degrees Celsius. This might all sound really, really finicky. I promise you it's not. <laughs> One of my first plants was a calathea and she's still going strong to this day. I really hope this video was useful. If it was, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Also, if you're not already, make sure to follow us on social media, Instagram at The Jungle Haven, Facebook, The Jungle Haven. I'll be bringing you lots more weekly houseplant videos soon, so stay tuned.